All right, you've all seen the PV by now, right? But today was the day they were supposed to drop the PV when the countdown timer ended and got removed on this teaser website. But you you guys know what happened. IGN happened. It leaked the trailer early. So the devs were forced to release everything that day instead of following their original schedule and teasing all the different things on this website. Well, it is what it is. The devs listened after all the feedback they've received, and today at around 9.59, 10 a.m. CN time, they cooked up a Q&A video responding to all the feedback that they have gathered, okay? Optimization issues, UI issues, combat animation issues, stuff like that, okay? This is in Chinese, okay? The English version of this dropped four hours later, 2 p.m. China time, so they had... You know, they were supposed to drop these at the same time, you know, the Chinese version comes out at the same time as the English simultaneous launch. But, you know, IGN fucked them. So uh, this was four hours late and uh, you can tell this was rushed because there's some typos, character desgen and model quality. But, you know, it is understandable. We blame IGN for this. Let's take a look. OK, devs actually fucking listen. All right, devs listen. Let's see what they have to say. Don't need to translate this from Chinese anymore. That's great. Uh, they said, after release of announcement trailer, gameplay trailer, we received a lot of feedback from players worldwide. We saw comments like, this is exactly what we want. This gameplay will definitely be fun, as, long as, as well as longer suggestions saying this part of design needs more refinement. Design would be even better if done correctly. All this feedback is valuable. They appreciate it. Thank you for all the support. Now they're going to, Talk a bit more, okay? So on optimizations, about optimization, everyone was excited and everyone knew that it was being, UE5 was being used. Will the game be well optimized, especially for mobile, right? This is the, one of the major concerns everyone had. Will this game run on mobile? We've seen Wuthering Waves using Unreal Engine 4 being absolutely shit to run on mobile, right? Everyone with complaining about optimization issues for Wuthering Waves, 60 FPS cap on PC. Surely when you go from UE4 to UE5, plus one means the engine has upgraded and it'll be harder for your devices to run the game. No, 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 no. Okay, that is not how engines work. UE5 has plenty of new features to make it easier to run on all these devices. For example, there's a thing called Nanite. I actually just learned about this yesterday. This thing allows you to render like millions of things without lagging. All right. If you guys want to learn more about this technology, just do a Google search. It's pretty fast. This shit is fucking amazing. Okay. So like utilizing UE5, it should be easier for the game to run, okay? And they said optimization for multi-platform play is a key focus for us. We have received your concerns about mobile adaptation. Rest assured, we will do our best to ensure a smooth experience on mobile and cloud platforms when realizing quality gap with other platforms. Mobile and cloud. So like if all else fails on mobile and they cannot optimize it to a quality standard that they like, there is always the option of cloud gaming, right? Cloud Genshin just launched globally, right? There was Cloud Tars Land. There's a lot of cloud things that are going to happen. And if cloud tech is released for this game, then, you know, you don't even need a good phone, right? As long as you can play a video and you have a good internet connection, cloud will let you play this game at PC level quality on your phone. There's that. And then there's people talking about UI. Obviously, this UI is early alpha stage UI. They're definitely going to change it, right? Give them more feedback. The UI is just UI action system, lacks polish, running animation of Zero looks weird. Zero was that uh, white haired character, probably the MC. So yeah, they said they're going to further polish the details, action system, bring everyone a better exploration experience. Sure. Combat system. Biggest shortcoming in the trailer seems to be the combat targeting track. Other aspects are lacking. Okay. Combat is based on Esper abilities and anomalies is a crucial aspect for us. We have received and carefully summarized your feedback on combat interactions, targeting FX and other optimization suge suggestions based on the trailer. We are currently working hard on these optimizations. Please rest assured. Okay. So as you guys have noticed, 
or some people have noticed, the combat is a mix between all kinds of different games we've seen, right? You see two different characters on the field at the same time. Quick swapping from Wuwa is in here. We have the break bar from Zenless Zone Zero also in that showcase. And then there was different elemental systems of the characters, right? The elemental system. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I can say this, but I'll leak it anyways. I saw uh, when I visited Perfect World that they had... There were six elements total. I saw some slideshows talking about the game, right? There's six elements total, and there will be some sort of elemental reaction system. Okay, so we're taking the best of both worlds, best of all worlds, the elemental reaction system from Genshin that is known to be good and power creep friendly. We're taking the Zenla Zone Zero break bar. We're taking the Wuwa quick swap system, which is really nice, good for combat. And we're taking the like Tower of Fantasy combat animations, all that stuff mixing it together to create this game. So like I'm I'm very positive combat will be good. Moving on, credibility of the single take PV. Okay, this is a lot of people are skeptical saying, "Okay, this is some pre-rendered PV. There's no way, there's no loading screen." So like they responded here, "We can assure you that the current content we have developed, including most of the gameplay shown in the trailer, can be experienced seamlessly. So there will not be loading screens, but there are indeed a few story-driven gameplay segments that require loading screens." Objectively speaking, achieving 100% seamless loading presents various challenges in game development, but striving towards this goal, ensuring interrupted smooth game, gaming experience will always be a top priority in our development process. So like they can't promise 100% no loading screens at all because like, you know, some stories need loading screens to load animations and stuff, but they're working on the least amount of loading screens as possible. That's fucking amazing. Okay. These other games could never. All right. Character design and model quality. There's a typo here. Uh, thank you, IGN, for their <laughs> forcing them to rush all of this. Uh, the characters shown in the trailer didn't really appeal to me, and the model seemed quite average. We have received a lot of suggestions regarding character design, model quality. We have taken them to heart. We are currently working on a series of optimization for character rendering and design. We will also be introducing more new characters soon, and we will welcome your continued valuable suggestions and feedback. I don't know about this one. I feel like, you know, everyone here has Hoyo brain rot. They've seen way too much, way too many Hoyo designs. I mean, I, I say, I'd say Hata should just stick to their own design and art style. Just keep it the way it is. I quite like the character. Okay. People should get used to it and not force the devs to make the characters look like all these other games. But I mean, personal take, it is what it is. We'll see what they cook, right? I'm okay with the existing designs already. Next up, this is some interesting information. Vehicle housing system, okay? With vehicle customization, there must be racing, right? Will there be online multiplayer gameplay? Rest assured, the open, open world gameplay of Neverness to Everness will not be limited to what was shown in the trailer. We can reveal a little bit more. Both the vehicle and housing system will have online multiplayer modes in future versions. So we have online multiplayer co-op, whatever, confirmed right here. Okay, so you can probably go visit other people's houses. You can probably race with them in the open world, all kinds of stuff, right? And then there will also be user-generated content, right? And they're planning for this already, so stay tuned. User-generated content. So, for example, I don't know, uh, your housing. Like, you can decorate housing, right? We already know that, right? On the Chinese website, they have, like, a blog post about what the game is all about. And over here, we have uh, clothing, food, lodging, travel. Okay, you're freely to customize whatever you want. So, like, I don't know, you can probably change your outfit as well, decorate your car, and then you can decorate your uh, your house freely, however you want. So, like... That's confirmed. User-generated content, you can, like, decorate your house, share it with others so they can take it. And then, you know, you can, I don't know, maybe they can cook a marketplace, like an actual marketplace. You design your own house in the furniture layout, and then you can, like, I don't know, sell it to other players. That would be fucking dope. Uh, I doubt that'll happen, though, but, you know. This reminds me of the good old Warcraft 3 days where people can cook custom maps and custom game modes. This will be huge, if real. Finally... Story, this is some good news right here. Interest in open world gameplay, a story shouldn't be lacking, right? Also, crucial question, question, can the story be skipped? Okay, to avoid spoilers, we'll keep the story details under wraps for now. However, we can assure you that the tone of our story is humorous, lighthearted, whimsical, just as defined in the game introduction, a lighthearted comedy. We aim to bring you an enjoyable, anomalous adventure. And as for that important question everyone is concerned about, rest assured, the story can be skipped. Okay, based fucking devs, they're confirming a skip button. 
if you don't give a fuck about the story and just wants to play anime GTA and fuck around in the open world, you can skip the story. That's great. Moving on. Test schedule. Okay, so this confirmation that we will have testing soon. And the first impression is great. You won't go silent after releasing the trailer, right? Please don't make us wait forever. As you can see with this FAQ, this Q&A, they're not definitely not keeping silent, right? The devs are also like, you know, responding with the official accounts under all these reaction videos, right? These devs are not the devs, actually. Let's, let's, let's differentiate devs and publisher, okay? The devs are hot to studios. The publisher is Perfect World. They're like, perfect, perfect World owns hot to studios, right? Perfect World is all one, publishing and responding to social media and all that stuff, okay? But yes, they are listening. They are the same company. Let them cook. All right. So regarding next steps for the game, we actually included a small Easter egg and announcement trailer, which many players have noticed. Neverness Neverness will make its first offline exhibition appearance in September. So Tokyo Game Show is the one they mean, probably, right? They have booths there already. Uh, we look forward to meeting you soon and bring more exciting new content. So for those of you that are interested, maybe book a ticket to Japan in September so you can play test the game live. Open world settings. I noticed there was no combat in the city shown in the trailers. It means that the, all combat in the game are triggered in the inner world. About this question, might have noticed from the game introduction that this is a world where humans and supernatural beings are inseparable. The anomaly space shown in the trailer is just a specific rule set of that particular anomaly. There are many other anomalies with different rules that can be encountered or fought in the open world. So there's going to be a lot of strange fucking things all around the world. Different types of combat encountered, probably. There's that. And uh, that is it to this Q&A. Thank you all for listening to us talk about so much. Always hope to bring some great ideas to life in the game, make it into the game you want it to be. We also soon bring a version that you can experience firsthand. So beta soon, first one. Uh, we welcome everyone to pre-register, follow NT social media, avoid missing out on updates, upcoming milestone. Look forward to seeing you again in September. Great communication. W devs, W communication. Don't be like Hoyo. It is what it is, okay? Off to a great start with the communication. Hopefully they keep it up. I'm sure they will. All right. So that's that. There are some things that they didn't talk about. There's, by, there's like also some things that are in Chinese that was never localized over here. So like, let me go over those. There's like some small things. So on the tap tap CN page, there is a developer message to the players. This is in Chinese. I don't think there was an English version of this. But uh, important things here is they really want this to be an immersive experience. So right here they said uh, they even went to learn urban planning and to learn like city planning designs from other games. Okay, they actually learned urban planning to make this game. All right, they want to make a lively urban city. Shops will be operating people in, on the streets will all have their own individual destinations, stuff like that. They want the city to look very alive. And then they're also very focused on the story, right? All open world games need to have a good story, just like Los Santos can't be without Michael, Trevor, and Franklin. So they have set the story tone of this game, Never Does to Everness, as some sort of light comedy. Okay, so they do care about the story, although you can skip if you don't care. Also... Uh, they want us to have a very immersive experience in the in the city. And they're focused on reducing exploration fatigue. So not like, you know, the usual open world exploration that we've had, be it Genshin, Tower of Fantasy, or Wuthering Waves, the three that we've had right now. Everyone running around in the fucking open world, opening chests to get currency for pulls. After doing this th three times, who the fuck still wants to do this, man? Right? Make exploration enjoyable first don't lock like pull resources behind exploration like it's just it turns into a chore after a while right so they're focused on immersive urban city life instead right and then they're gonna have some sort of right here kind of important they will have a city management gameplay to increase uh fun and interest and make it interesting Okay, so there will be like, you will be able to like manage restaurants, shops or work at restaurant shops to make currency for the, for the game, 
right? And then you get manage operate shops to get currency. And then you'll be able to buy houses, buy cars to live a good life type of situation. They want it to be as immersive as possible. And they're continuing to, uh, I think this is, they're using UE5. They're going to do their best for multi-platform optimization, right? Let everyone get the experience, the, the best experience possible. And then finally at the end, uh, th thank you to everyone's interest. And if you want to join Hata Studios and make the game better together, they are hiring. So, uh, you know, I don't know how many of you guys care about this. Uh, they have a hiring page on their CN official website. Okay, they're hiring basically every type of job, right? A dev work, artist, planning, all kinds of stuff working at Sujo Hata HQ. And also if you're a publishing expert, okay, language expert, video editing expert, whatever, community manager, stuff like that, overseas marketing, right? They're hiring all kinds of jobs. You can work in Beijing at Perfect World headquarters. So yes, this is Perfect World's highest priority game right now. They are doing their best and we can tell trying to make everything work. So good luck to them. Okay.